He needs no introduction, Professor Didier Platin. It's an honor to have him. He has written a lot of dictionaries, and the dictionaries that we need to research very frequently because it's a precious work for the theater and, and puppet world. I found out that Professor Platin was nominated a um, for for the arts and the letters and. He has been received an award for it, and I would like to thank you, Philippe, and thank you especially to Paolo, Paolo for your invitation, and to Nima, of course, who made be the offer to come to Florinopolis, the go of my speech, of my lecture. It's a project, it's a very theoretical problem. What's a good distance for between the mic and the mouth? Should it be closer? Should it be farther? A little bit more? Is, is that good right now? Okay. So, like I was saying, it's a theoretical, very theoretical problem that reflects about the theater directing and how it can be applied to in order to deal with the artistic work of the theater companies that deal with puppetry and this takes us to think about what is directing and i will postulate the theater of history of puppetry from my point of view is not cannot be separated from the actors uh, theater these two modalities of the performing arts sometimes may have drifted a little bit from one another. Perhaps they, they had autonomous ramifications of their own, but even at these moments, in me, autonomously speaking, but they still had a link, a relationship. And so like Giovanni Moretti proposes, in the interior in, of the theatrical system where the group of a performing arts of a city and given the artistic moment, I propose that we reflect of the role of the director in the puppet theater, contemporary puppet theater. In the golden era of Spain, the representations of puppets designated by royal machines, they are machines, pieces, that were performed by the actors, sometimes actors, sometimes puppeteers. There's, there are the choices, therefore, religious choices that would prohibit comedians and certain times of the year to go on stage. In France, the, a theater from the 17th and 18th century also dealt with prohibitions from the artists and they used puppets, well, not Pro religious prohibitions, but
but more economically speaking they saw that the monopoly that of the theater of the of the comedy the theater was a royal privilege and so the pieces the the pieces the performances should therefore be done out loud on the 19th century with the puppet theater there was a great development especially in Europe in the multiplication of radical forms and the privileged normally the privilege that we give to these more specific repertoires of Dignor, Casper and the Liège's puppets or the Sicilian puppets we can't forget the roles that these great popular melodramas and the role that they had especially the itinerary companies and the puppet theaters implemented in different European cities they could def and together to the public together with the public due to geographical reasons or economical reasons there was no possibility to access the great stages so these itinerary uh, companies they had to present always the same theaters with the puppets, either with puppets or actors, according to the cities, the towns, or the public. On the 20th century, this popular performance will increase, and it took us to a little differentiation between the puppet theater and the actor's theater, concentrating massively on theater for a younger public on this part, for the part of this uh, century, and puppeteers conquered a new identity, a new legitimacy, that will allow the institutionalization of their art. These repertoires of the actors, of the theaters, of the puppeteers, they, they distance a little bit in terms of production, of political formation, and even the definition of the professions. On the contrary, they would uh, get them more together. And then there were also more radical transformations, family companies, started opening more space for these companies that were founded by the artists. Private companies, very modestly, were replaced by public subventions. And their importance varies according to the level of institutionalization that was taken to state theaters and the communist blocs. And less in the Eastern European part, but more in public uh, spaces and well-equipped stages and even theaters with actors. And so these transmission, traditional mode, family, the relationship between master and, and disciple, this became the professional relationship like the, for the comedians, for, for the at dramatic arts and so on. And in the choice of these tools, there are very little distinguish the puppet theater from the actor's theater because they give privilege to the manipulation. The puppeteers also became comedians themselves and symmetrically speaking, because the art of the puppet were reservoirs for linguistic arts and it, it offers different techniques. And in terms of system, the, the directing should be done once the puppet theater and the way they presently work, they come closer to the actor's theater. How does it integrate its own practice and the artistic mutation, most importantly for the actor's theater, that happened in the second half of the 20th century, the one that, general, that deals with generalization and institutionalization of the modern regime of teaching, like those that were invented in the last decades of the 19th century. And, and to speak of the, maybe perhaps another, another perspective, the puppet theater today perhaps could be considered a brother of the actor's theater because of their economical institutional way. It, it could be like a younger brother perhaps, and but much less rich but still recognizable nonetheless. We could stay the same about the artistic plane and to deal with this issue, it's important to get, be interested up regarding the significance of the directing modern of this modern directing definition of the sense. The theatrical production is based on a way of directing that is on the organization of the 
presentation, but this organization can be done in varied ways. The function of the director can be taken by, upon by one of the actors in the representation. The eldest, like in the French Academy, was the boss or someone, not only actors, but, but at the time the master or the author. Authors like Victor Hugo did it at the time. This could be, this could happen because uh, with a collective of, of actors like the Belgian company or the performing action can come from the hierarchy of roles like in traditional theaters in Asia, for example, each interpreter knows perfectly well their own role in the representation of everything. So there are a lot of regimes for directing. There are the first signs of modern regime as you can as, as is perceived by historians today, they started showing up in European theater in the end of the 18th century, when a new demand started to to exist due to the visual part of the performance, a most more co coherent one, a more realistic one, as well. But that's just at the end of the 19th century. The ideas of directing started to happen at the end of the 19th century. And it happens in some theaters in Russia, in France, in Germany. Well, briefly, it is a double process to, uh, that hum, that of homogenization that works with theatrical productions. The, this homogenization concentrates the powers in the hands of the director. He is no longer the the maestro in charge of of rehearsals of the montage, of the design, of the availability of props, but he's the one that actually gathers a whole artistic team for a single object in order to gain an autonomy on his choices for projects that he has available and his means. He also takes over the, like Ludwig Kronig, for example, Andrea Antoine, Jacques Coupeau, Max Rein Reinhardt, they associate get associated. They associated by contract like Stanislavski or Medirovic. There is a model that starts being posed little by little. For example, in France, they nominated an artist to direct the great in theatrical institutions, which are subventioned by the French state. And the second process is the one that deals with singularization of each theatrical production. In the 19th century, different productions of in, a, on a same, in the same theater use the same props, the same clothing, the same sceneries for decades. And thanks to books that taught about these, all these details were registered. The addition, the publication of these great successful Parisian theaters, and even they copied these Parisian productions in the spirit of in the, of men's of theater. This didn't exist. There was only one possible directing for one given theater, and this was the uh, instruction. This was the instruction manu manual for the performing arts that we can find in theatrical libraries up to this moment. These Parisian productions. So the modern regime of directing, on the contrary, it's, it's defined that each production, each theatrical production constitutes a singular piece. Why do we produce new designs, new clothing, new for it? And also because the work also was taken to stage, even theater, each production uh, underlines its own distance, the differences, and and like Antoine Vitesse will define, it is an art of variation, and directors like Ingrid Bergman, George Streller, Halkin, they explored throughout their careers new modalities of montage in within the same masterpiece and this singularization of each piece is more is very important because modern directors leave their role of technician 
of of the stage behind and then you start becoming more artists and they make their own personal choices the imaginary and each production becomes a, a a recognizable signature since the romanticism originality the originality of a piece gives the artist its legitimacy and throughout the the, the, the performance there was a need to sign to its masterpieces, and they end up competing with the own author of the work piece. Roger Blanchon used to say that we can be directors only in classical scenes. These are already no, well-known texts that were performed on stage that deal with the originality of the director. Contemporary texts, on the, on the other hand, they create a rivalry context situation where two artists they are simultaneously work without the public knowing the participation of one or another on the play. So very quickly here, having elaborated the process in which progressively the modern regime was installed upon, I would like to define some of the main guidelines to determine whether they can be they can be found in the equivalent in the puppet theater in con contemporary puppet theater. The first of these guidelines is linked to the educational part of the theater that implicates a link a privileged link with culture and the past. The institutionalization of the modern re regime regime of directing, particularly after World War II, was happened thanks to the public financing of theatrical activity that implied, on the, uh, on the other hand, involved in teams that consecrated the representation of texts of a classical repertoire, a phenomenon that could be equivalent to the history of modern Western theater. And this concentration, this interest on the classical repertoire that gives the director territory is it's ideal to work with originality and conducts therefore the directing becomes a, a a device for interpretation the representation theatrical representation is not doesn't is doesn't deal only with translation and the images on of a text that's that's read in a spontaneous way Bavis said that directing is not an execution of the text, but it's but a discovery of the text, and more precisely, the rediscovery. And this different uh, poetical difference regarding the texts will assume a risk. And uh, as of 1929, Gaston Bastille, with his masterpiece. Imaginary disease of Baudelaire, of women, sorry, the imaginary sickness disease of women. He will bring a, a, a sick person who was uh, misunderstood by his family, Louise Jouvet, in 1951, from Tartuffe, no longer became a hypocrite, but a honest Christian that lived the conflict between his religious faith and his sexual appetites. Antoine Vitesse, in 1978, he did the same role of Tartuffe, no longer by an old artist, ugly, like it used to be represented, but Fontana, a young and seductive uh, movie, movie actor. In the 60s and 60s, the critical dimension of directing disconstructed the expected and presented a commentary of the masterpiece more than the masterpiece itself, and it becomes more generalized. Especially, it has it supports different interpre interpretive systems, psych uh, psychoanalysis, and the Marxist side as well. And if these readings, ideological readings, were abandoned nowadays, are abandoned nowadays, the principle of Antoine Vitesse 
that says that you shouldn't create what is said, well, that's the difference, and that's the interesting part. This principle is always respected. The modern regime of directing is still dominated by the, ref by the refusal to take the evident uh, relationship to text. Each element of directing, due to the distance that they install within what is told, is creates a comment, more or less written comics by him, and in a way, directing is particularly due to the old repertoire, a way to put in the text into tests and to vary the significance, significances that it can have to us today. This is where the concept of dramaturgy intervenes. No longer a, in the old sense of the way, but of the the written of uh, the, the writings of a th a theater text, but a sense that you can extend the meaning of this performance, where you talk about visual dramaturgy, the sound dramaturgy, for a more res strict sense of the term, where dramaturgy talks about production, the way that practice is done by Berninier Ensemble, which is a systemized in the 70s by Peter Stein. In the modern sense, in strict sense, dramaturgy is, is no longer the way that a story, only a story is told with, with words or sound or lighting, etc. It's the way that we produce the, the, sign, the significance and the relationship that is established between the, told, the story that is told and the means that we use in order to tell it. And if you want, it could be a writing in a second level based on analogical relations, metaphors, metonymies, allegories, between what is said and what is told and what is shown. In order to illustrate this point, and to show that this dimension can also exist in the puppet theater, as long as it doesn't limit to put an image into theatrical text, I would take two examples. One of them, which is Valentin, in the directing of Cid in Corneille from 1996. He uses, a, he uses puppets, ice puppets, and that's, that's the first de video demonstration. Please, if you could roll it. wrestlers, the fighters, have a head and body. We are no longer in the Corneille theater. What do you think what do you plan on doing with all of these ideas? Here we see a treasure of the imagination. These puppets are made out of ice, and they do things that really go beyond. It allows us to go beyond the text. The ice plates allows us to go beyond the text, and it, it changes. And there's a change in the academy because of that. They are they are small puppets with clothing, and we couldn't have done them like the old ways. We had to find an aesthetic purpose, and here we see how they are frozen into place, minus 135 degrees in these molds and then they are perforated and emptied with their interior material and then put back into the freezer so they can be then wait for the moment where the curtain is raised. What were the worst difficulties that we had? Well, it was to find a link between these articulations to give the shoulder, for example, and the elbow they are, because they are not 
heat conductors. And so the puppet had to remain complete the longest time possible. We, we, we deal with the thickness and of the ice. Sometimes we want them to be more transparent, sometimes not so much. They are different every time we make them. The water, the minerality, the composition changes the aspect of the ice. And that we dealt with all of this. And through the strings, we, you can see the puppeteers, they become, they act differently. And, and normally in a puppet theater, the manipulator is the one that gives the, in, the temporal uh, dimension to the puppet. Here, it's destroyed after an hour for obvious reasons. And so that's always the last performance for these characters. We may distance ourselves from the text. This performance integrates music to the verb and it allows manipulators to be seen and they do the same thing as classical actors. And I think this performance effectively has works on the appearance of what was made. You have nothing to fear. And at the end of the show, the appearance are still fascinate. The team ends the anxiety of these heroes, and so the next day the show can start all over again. Thank you. Therefore, the choice of the ice in this case was justified by the fact that the Corneille's text is following the code of Baroque poetic uses this ice image of like the fire image in order to describe the state of the characters. Don Diego, Rodrigo's father, has a, a full body of ice, and it seems that he's older, and he seems to get revenge on it, his own insult. But the material also allows them to use their imagination, the cold beauty uh, to test the classical, the glow in the in the in the type of Gournay and so on, and when the puppets start fusing and melting during the the performance, they end up losing an arm, for example, and that's the whole drama of the of the meeting between the public, and it's represented this way. And the second example, which I'm about to show you, it's called Fouberie de Scapin. 2006. Uh, I'll, just two minutes of the video and then I'll signal you to stop. tell you the truth, it's just an impossible feat. And from the heavens came a very beautiful genius. He, talk up, he talks about the factory worker who has a noble profession. I've renounced all the things and adventure where I would fight against the circumstances. So that's normal with me and 
and their strength against the ingratitude of the century, I chose not to do anything else. What horrible news I received. You told me that my father will be coming back. Will be returning this morning? Is that what you just said? And then he'll be, he'll come with a decision that I have to marry. somber and alarming news. He wants me to get married to someone. That's what cruel, cruel news. You cry? I would like to be sure that you still love me. Will you always love me? I would like to know what can be said about this beautiful wedding. And so the discourse becomes useless. Sir, I am happy that you're finally back. So, Scarpin is made by an actor, performed by an actor, and the illustration is simply of the comical principle created of the one who was actually uh, the owner of the game, the one that in classical comedy and Latin comedy is the organizer, the manipulator of others, including his own master. His master and the other characters are merely characters that come out of a bag that he manipulates, that he makes them talk, and that announce the moment in the play, Scarpin convinces his master to hide in the bag and then 
afterwards he gives the bag a few hits. And the second function of the modern regime of the directing is what I would call of a creative device. Because it got emancipated from the authority of the text of the dramatic test by using another kind of material or creating their own, its own dramaturgy. The modern director takes on ever since the 70s or so the role of a creator of people. The force of evidence in the first performance of Robert Wilson or the theater cycle of death with Tadeusz Gondou and more recently the performance of Romeo Castellucci People de Bono or Philippe de Can, these are witnesses, testimonies that the dream that was formulated by Eduardo and then Antonio Arto, the dream of a di creative direct creating your own dramaturgy that can be performed, a dramaturgy in the sense of constructing a narrative, and the world becomes more dense and consistent on consistent on stage. This, however, is not cut out from the reality that we live in. This world works like Michel Foucault would observe the way of heterotopies. Like Foucault used to say, types of utopies that are effectively used in which all of the observ real observations that can be found in within culture sometimes are represented and contested and inverted. This view, perspective actually, does not take its full theatrical force, but but it it actually performed to a public and builds a, a relationship with the experience of this with the public, where the world lives on a daily basis. The theatrical production in a limited space and time, a new imaginary agency that's necessary. The man uh, inhabits a a poet and in this an attempt to transform because for the most part this is founded on visual language and arts so, so the pu contemporary puppet theater works frequently as a creative device and however it's still necessary to be a little skeptical about image productions and that's why we go back to the dramaturgical part in the sense of Brecht in the reflection of the means in which a story is written. The imaginary cannot be limited to the creation of a group of images that through the choice of forms or the proportions or materials, the way they are animated, this tells nothing about the world in which we live in. And it's necessary that the performance should plague with these heterotopical dimensions and allowing us to recognize our own experiences and taking into account the imaginary creation and the re-agency of, of recreation of a visual poem. So if I'm taking examples of French productions, I'm, I apologize, Philippe Gentil, of course, with the scene of the, in, no, with the scene from the the end uh, the end of the earth please if you would roll number 3 video number 3 
that's just an example just to show you we all know but how the puppet theater can represent the costumes visually based on a scene that simply represents the potentiality of desire, the seduction in a minimal scene in a directing that was conducted magnifically and the other scene which is different more enigmatic in a way is from a performance from 2011 called Impermanence again using ice Just fast forward a little, just a little bit further, a little further. Yeah, perfect. All right. Thank you. So here is more of our own experience with materials and sensations between hot and cold. And it's also the way that the topic of the disappearance of death is dealt with. Then what touches us is an allegory that every spectator can give its own significant give their own significance it's our own experience of the idea of the materials and the ideas and the sensations that's at play 
and the third dimension of the modern regime of directing upon which I would like to call your attention to is the one that I would call a apparition device. It's a dimension that we see that's aff affirming itself, particularly as especially after the 80s where the performing arts in a society that's dominated by media started being conducted and reconfigured in, in a live performance and taking into account the performing presence of concern with the aspect and that's the theatrical representation has a variety of models that are present, corporality, making the stage a space where the appearance of man and the means in how to show the value of what's actually happening. So relating to uh, bodies that are not normal or deformed using circus techniques or stratus of ordinary common lives, like using the physical presence of the scene, the contemporary directing puts into play complex strategies where the real and the and the fiction or and one or the other, the present and the absent, well they are similarly invoked and, at, and one of the biggest challenges is the contemporary scene where the theatrical space became a, a place of deconstruction and experimenting and the, the construction of identities, alternalities, and representations. I would also say identifications. A place that's also, what we also produce an inclusive image of society to fight against the process of, of exclusion that the same society is actually responsible for. And there's also a dimension in which the contemporary puppet theater, it's very, it's very evident and allows to act on these levels of these presences, the actor and the manipulator and the object that's being manipulated and the dramaturge in this case produces significant relationship between the confrontation of these two bodies, the live body and the inanimate object their relationships and in the gestures of animation themselves. The last two examples in order to illustrate this point, initially the news of Julie Camayer, which is a performance uh, from 2001.
thank you. So the hyper-realism of the puppet echoes to the source of what was used in the sound in interviews conducted by old people who told about oh, about their lives. And in all cases, the directing introduces to the stage an, a non-habitual way of reality, but reproducing identically in a hyper-realistic situation of these uh, registered interviews. And at the same time, in a small scale, reduced by the puppet, this allowed us to create um, some image of a real person to the to the spectator and transform this puppet, this old person, into a child. So the puppet becomes a sort of an object that's uh, uh, fantastical, that represents a state of childhood. And for these old people is the way they support that's how the adult goes back into the situation where it first met the, the child with its grandmother and the last is the small souls, petit alms. It is a silence performance based on a dream that designates a small chapel that can be found in the Portuguese field and where you we will be praying by for the souls of the dead.
Thank you. So here we can see different levels of presence, the puppet itself, the image that's filmed and diffused with, infused with a little delay and transparency, the hands and feet that are larger than the ones the puppeteer uses. And this constitutes to presences where there are micro dramatic situations and micro narratives are involved. Images of distancing between the body and the soul, images between the present, the present and the, the memories, images of, of one's childhood, images of learning how to walk, images of the game, of the child's game with playing with the adult's shoes that are too large for him. And there is also a dramaturgy which pays attention to the different types of the human that are built on the space of emotions and the significances. And so to conclude, I believe we can say that the pup contemporary puppet theater knew how to invest on different dimensions of the modern regime of teaching. And it became, therefore, one of the components of per contemporary performer arts. We can also affirm that the last two dimensions that I just evoked right now, they are part of a creative device, an apparition device, which are specifically developed. The only issue, in my opinion, is the one regarding the interpretation device, which seems a bit more rare in the performance once it's supported on a repertoire text. Frequently, we have over positions of texts and the images of these texts without the real work of the dramat dramatist uh, is done. The lack of means because the time to, for construction is short and for the time on the table building, but there's also the lack of information, the lack of training, and I think that's where we need to make an effort on the training. Thank you so much to DDA for this magnificent conference. You notice that he worked this, his per he, he, he touched upon his own personal topic from the heart. And he also ended up like we would, like we say, we put our feet through the door. Perhaps there was a distortion, a distance, a contradiction on this issue of interpretation. And it's true that what I think it's, what it's all always admirable is the complexity and the simplicity at the same time of the proposals and the choices of examples that are made, especially to show us here in this conference, the emancipation of the puppet theater and the emancipation which is still not over. I will thus give space for questions and debates, if there are any questions. Thank you, Didier. You talked about this relationship between the directing the scene, directing the, th the th actor's theater and a puppet theater. Do you think it's possible that there may be directors who go from one type of theater to another? Or is there something that enables a type of a division that limits the communication between these two. No, there is no divide 
between between them. Of course, there are, my, my, may have uh, different. Uh, there are problems regarding uh, professional proposals, strategies for production, networks, professional networks that are built. We see puppeteers who become theater directors, uh, actors. There are many cases. And I see Daniel, I think about Daniel Veronese, this Argentinian director who is an example that comes to my mind right now. And many other theater directors who have started with the puppet theater, Peter Sela and others. Directors of the Actors Theater who become puppeteers. Gaston Batti was the first one, perhaps. But I think what's this difficult part is alternating between them. And when you go from one system to another, I think it's it's a problem that's much more regarding a network of contexts of professionals because I think it's a more of an aesthetic issue. What is right is that what we see we see a lot of puppet uh, companies, for example, that are um, linked to their own puppet performances that are locked up. And then there are many actor directors who insert puppets into their production. And we see, therefore, artists who work in the extremes between these two because there are, there are not two opposite that, that there are domains that are completely opposite i think there are more economical obstacle obstacles than reception but i think that my, but that's just my my intuition that i'm sharing here with you Anyone else has a question? Good morning. Eu preciso falar inglês porque Não ficou muito claro para mim. Esse dispositivo de aparição da qual você mencionou é, é muito, muito interessante. E... Mas eu não entendi exatamente o que você quis dizer. Você podia explicar um pouquinho mais sobre isso? Novamente? Em francês ou... Posso explicar em francês? Obrigado. I'm not my convinced myself of the precision of this word. We talked a lot today regarding the theories of theater the issues of the actor's presence. That's why I think that the presence has become central. We simply, we say that it, it, we are, part, we are, in, we work on a daily, on our daily life, we in work with relations, the relationships we have with people who are close to us, We live technological simulations, simulations of the present, for example, Skype, or we, we act as if people are really there. On stage, we can then really show the difference between actually being there and not being there, or not totally being there. 
and that's why I believe that the theatrical space is a space that takes on this role. It has this function, this role uh, where we can very, have different types of presence. And that's an image of two very the models of presence. Presence on video, presence in, in real time, differentiated presence, and so on. And this issue effectively regarding the exclusion outside the social field of sick, diseased bodies, of, of uh, uh, malformed bodies, or aging bodies, and so on. And still, this is still very important in, perform in contemporary performing arts. I think it's important to show the different states of the human being, the different states of humanity. And through this word apparition device, then, I try to capture these dimensions. I try to talk about both at the same time because I believe that they're all linked. At least it's what I believe up to the present. Anyone else? has any questions, comments? In this perspective of the diversity of the modalities of the of the performing theater, where would the image of the critic when the parameter is no longer canonic, it's no longer based on some other kind of reference. I don't know if I'm, I was, uh, I made myself clear. Eu talvez eu possa falar em inglês, eu não preciso de tradução. In this sense of executions and modalities and language and aesthetics and techniques, where would the figure, the image of the theater critic be in the sense that he no longer has a canonic sense to execute as a critic? Frankly, I think that this depends on the country and on the tradi artistic traditions and cultural traditions. I come from a country where theater critics are almost non-existent, are almost non-existent in my country because they no longer find, they, the people still exist, yes, but, but they have expressions, spaces to express their visual critic, it, and the space is very small in the written media, in the virtual media, and therefore the criticisms, the critiques today are developed on the internet much more through blogs, critic, critic blogs, and so on. For example, in order to find the space to reflect that you no longer find in traditional written media, this space, this digital space that's offered nowadays, and at the same time, the internet is the place where everyone and every each one of us can intervene and write and express ourselves. Therefore, there is a problematic in terms of visibility, and this paradox, 
according to which I practically need to be in the field or in the theater fields in order to know what kind of language the, the critic the, that critiques or gives legitimacy. I know a lot of students who create sites and blogs to as critics in Italy. This is something that happens considerably. As a reflection that's very intelligently documented, but evidently the difficulty is obvious, visibility, the visibility of this type of discourse. And that's how a profession that's destined to disappear, there are not a lot of countries where you can actually live based on that as a theater critic. A large newspaper, they only ask, for example, for freelance reporters and journalists so it's something much more present, punctual articles, uh, critiques, um, and not regular profess professionals that are paid a salary by the newspapers. So of course, of course, it's a problem with the visibility of these critics, and uh, and also what's what still exists in the in the media and when I talk about media I'm talking about the institutionalized media like newspapers television this is much more a prom work for promoting the production but still there are still a few channels more specific channels where there may be space for debate in terms of critique, but for that, I'm, I still don't know what happens in other countries. Thank you. Eu posso falar em inglês? É um prazer finalmente vê-lo depois de ter ouvido falar de você por tanto tempo. O meu mestre foi em foi uma voz dentro do teatro de animação e enquanto eu procurava por estudos e pesquisas eu, des eu descobri muito pouco sobre vozes dentro do teatro de animação em francês, em inglês, em português, em espanhol eu não conseguia ler outras línguas, outros idiomas que talvez nos quais eu descobri alguma coisa então Na sua palestra, você também falou algo que eu talvez eu não tenha entendido direito, porque o meu francês não é tão bom, mas você fala sobre esse império do, do visual. Você não falou exatamente dessa maneira, mas você usou algo parecido com esse termo. E o meu francês é... é acho que é, é importante isso dentro do teatro de francês. E, portanto, eu gostaria de saber se você tem algum tipo de exemplo de pessoas que trabalham, não como no exemplo que você trabalha, por exemplo, com, com voz de diferentes papéis, mas trabalhando no, no mesmo nível de experimentação, como a última peça que nós vimos aqui, dentro do teatro de animação, a parte visual e a voz dentro deste outro nível claro, claro primeiramente eu não sei se você sabe disso, mas uh, em Portugal, em Évora em Portugal, Évora e há um grupo de pesquisa que trabalha uh, com é, cenários e son de sonoplastia e tal em Dom Alberto Então, é o início de uma pesquisa que está acontecendo nessa área. Há poucas publicações ainda. E eu acho que existe uma em francês, se eu não me engano. Bem, os pesquisadores estão começando a trabalhar com isso. Acho que o melhor exemplo que eu diria, que eu daria, é Gisele Vienne. Uh, 
acho que a sua performance, o título dessa performance é Jerk. E eu posso te mostrar um vídeo depois, se você quiser, porque ela trabalha com Hollande Ventry e com esse tipo de performance e é realmente um, que é um ventríloco excelente. Então, ele executa ele, três ou quatro níveis fictícios de vozes na mesma produção. E é algo impressionante, é algo muito impressionante, porque ele é absolutamente... Ele não movimenta os lábios, é algo incrível, mas ele e produz três tipos ou quatro tipos diferentes de níveis fictícios de vozes. Bem, ele está... É um, fazendo o papel de um homem que está preso, porque ele foi, foi parte de um dos grupos de assassinos na década de 70 que torturaram e que estupraram e que mataram jovens pessoas. É um, é um baseado em fatos é, reais, isso. Então, a ficção é agora... Bom, o cara está no, na prisão e ele também... Posso continuar em francês? Para mim fica mais fácil. Obrigado. The actor has the role of an old a, a murder accomplice who tortured and violated and raped and killed in the 70s in the United States. So the fiction here is that now he has gone through psychiatric treatment and a few years later he gives a conference gives a lecture to a group of psychiatrists in the university. And for this lecture, he uses glove puppets to perform the torture and death and rape scenes and so on. And conducts the role, he plays the role of this old member of the group, and he, of course, also does the voices of the puppets. The voices of the victims who had been murdered. And he would he would produce these puppets and as they as if they were um, cadavers or living dead. I thought about this example, these the work that he has done with these victims, and I think it's a perf an exceptional performance that could probably interest you, Giselle Vienne. This is a more recent performance that's called. The Ventriloquist's Convention, and it shows a group of ventriloquists, actors with your puppets, and in this case, there are two or three levels of fiction that are ex this extremely impressive, and I think that's the best example to your question. Any other questions or comments? I would like to go back to your interrogation regarding the use of the apparition concept since you have may have a question or maybe it's more expected of but in some I would like to say three points that actually mark the originality that's 
vis that's visible in the contemporary theater and then the puppet theater. It's a dramaturgy, it's a production that works on the appearance, a singularity that subverts the reality, reality. And we see that in the end, both theaters are actually linked to one another. And it seems to me that the, the concept of apparition here is specific to the puppet theater of the object of the puppet. And have you noticed this kind of presence behind perhaps a conflict between media technology on a plane uh, of the use of concept of the happenings? So people live in a constant happening. So I, I ask myself, because I posed a question in the same way as you did, but this, it, this came, it came to me as a concept of apparition of happening. If the puppet theater, at the end of the day, would it present today a, a it would be more powerful than the human theater, especially because initially, it finds a power that movie making has captured that has a captive public due to the image and the concept of apparition together with the concept of presence introduces the fantastical the hyper reality it's it's not only a question but but the question is in regards to the weirdness of the return of the presence and the issue of the presence is is an issue it's a religious issue mythical and you talked about the excluded about those who have deformities or disabilities so how can we use the analog of the invisible and I used to ask myself, would, wouldn't this be, especially to give more basis to your intuition, the, the announcement, for example, the, of this powerful, of this, this is powerful, of the powerful puppet theater, and which is necessary to encourage in training the interpretation the, of these presence performances. Yes, I believe there are a lot of questions, simultaneous questions, uh, in regards to apparition. The idea, I think that I used to think, as whenever I thought about this word, this text, the manifest of the La Mort Theatre of Cantor, he said that it was necessary to to redeem the idea of the actor and go and say that the real happening is the human on scene. And I believe that what I try to nominate with this is that effectively, how did the apparition of the human on scene is an object of art, of artistic work, of artistic collaboration. It, it can become a emotional happening that has reason, that has gives motive to the spectator. So, to give you a little bit of the his of the story, and and I thought about Cantor, I thought about doing the happening by using the human, and then afterwards, the puppet theater really, truly is very much. It's not the only. Uh, the actor theater, for example, if we look into the example of works and pieces regarding the presence in video or the presence in real time on scene, from the 70s onwards, we've had experiment situations where in the actor theater where they are so powerful and rich that in puppet theater, this only started in the late 80s or so. I, I, I haven't seen any previous any examples previous previous to 1989, 
but this week I was uh, I was at uh, the, the School of Dramaturgy Montpellier, the, uh, the dramatic uh, School of Dramatic Arts in Montpellier. We showed some images of Genesis of from Romeo Castellucci, and I saw this performance and a few video images. We're able to see that this body, this very tired body, this uh, this actor, he was emaciated. He comes close to anorexia, and he has. Well, I don't remember clearly, but uh, he had an older woman. And the first image was of Adam and Eve. It was an old woman with gray hair naked who had the ablation of both breasts and so I would tell myself while looking at these images that this is the same phenomenon that is happening in the puppet theater for example when we see the performance of Paulo Duarte we not only see the character we also see a representative of a certain age, an allegory of the human. And this is exactly what I felt when I watched Gen Genesis from Castellucci. It, it means that this extremely different body, different from ours at least for now, this body is invisible in the social space because it's hidden. It has a power, a allegorical, strong allegorical power, the same as a puppet, same way that a puppet. It becomes an example, an example of an allegoric image, figure of the human and of the human condition. I'd say. Therefore, I kept on watching actor theaters and I still think it's love it and I wouldn't like to oppose one and another and say that one is superior than the other no I try to show that the work that we work the same way even if you don't think about it that much that's what I try to do in my interventions and then the notion of presence evidently it's religious but it's still used in the sense that it's not religious in the in the pure sense horizontal without any verticality whatsoever there is no eminence there's no transcendence of what is hidden of what has been distanced uh, to the outside of the social and what is social and what is visible and what is rejected, effectively, effectively uh, rejected because these bodies are old and are sick and are at the hospital and so on. There is no transcendence here. It's, uh, it's due to the order of the intimate experience of a social phenomenon. acho que isso foi provocado pelo seu comentário sobre a religiosidade e o que estamos fazendo a respeito disso. Nós estamos vendo cada vez mais rituais sendo incorporados dentro das, das produções. Estamos vendo a, a emergência de alguns artistas como Peter Schumann e que tem um papel social e econômico como xamãs, xamãs contemporâneos. Poderíamos hoje em dia incorporar campos como antropologia, por exemplo, dentro da formação de teatro de, de artistas de teatro de animação contemporâneos? First of all, what I observe and what I try to analyze it's exactly what happens on stage. Regarding the training,
regarding the training of directing, I don't, I don't have the same expertise, the same vision, so I'll be very cautious regarding the training part. But, of course, there are a lot of uses in ways and signals and forms and extracted from rituals in the contemporary directing scene, like Peter Schumann, for example, it is a, it's a very important one. It's very precise. This is a cultural relationship, I think. The traditions, the religious traditions, when he when he gives the funeral, funerary or religious ceremonies, I think that will be taken will not be taken to the other spheres but only artistically speaking so that I think is more I think it's mostly material of the fiction and the way they're construed fiction is construed on the one hand and if I think we should use our own cultural baggage and this mobilizes the me memory our memories especially the religious devices. And on the other hand, this extraordinary movement due to the circulation of models, perhaps, of culture that also allow us to get passionate about and utilize them of ritualistic forms from other cultures This could mean that there is a universalization of the uh, cultural heritage of the world and therefore a library or imaginary museum that's, that could be extremely vast in terms of behavior, religious behavior and so on, that could be used to that extent. But in order to be a true religious gesture with true religion meaning behind it and to obtain success in this journey well I don't think that's a, that's the path I'm only talking about the use of this vocabulary of this structure of this element and well Peter Schumann he is to my knowledge an example of someone who was able to manipulate these signs because after all the the divide and the of the, the sharing of the bread and the way that he shares the bread with a lot of garlic the way that he prepares it and the the presence of Christ in this bread We remain, therefore, with symbols, merely symbols. Last question, please. teaching is facing a com great complexity in terms of resources and possibilities. And there's always the discussion of uh, training that involves more uh, research. Do you think this path of progression in order to find a new way of creating the, the 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 creative communication that will affect the public. Do you think it will we will be able to find the simplicity and the ingenuity in the scenes?
you mean that through the understanding, a more complex understanding, there is better knowledge? We could attain a new intuition, perhaps? For sure. For sure. Absolutely. Of course. This is the path. taken by the puppet theater in the tree of knowledge, for example. So we need to keep on eating fruit from the knowledge tree and to find paradise from the back door. And I am I, I agree totally with you because when things become too complex The human spirit tries to simplify, of course, of course. Here's the word time for questions. First of all, thank you so much for your lecture. I'm also going to be, question, uh, be questioning about the anthropological issue. I remember reading a text, a text about a presentation from Philippe Gentil in Africa, a puppet presentation production. And in the midst of the presentation, the puppet started flying around and then it all, so, and it vanished because you said that this was about a ritual and a ritual only. So the scenographists, in a, differently from, from the anthropologists, sometimes they when we're in the midst of a ritual, we do things, we touch up, uh, with, on, upon other energies. So I would like to know your reflection on that. What's clear in regards to that is that Peter Schumann is not a witch, okay? He's not a wizard, he's not a witch. He is an artist. So if he establishes a relationship, a artistic relationship to something beyond that, well then I'm not going to be adventuring myself into, t I'm not going to be talking anything about it because I didn't implicate myself in that ritual. For me, it's a bit outside the field of my knowledge, but I, I would just like to say that the issue of the use of symbols, ritualistic symbols, it creates a, a cultural relationship with the spectator. Very well, very well. Thank you so much. I did say that it was the last issue, but you can come talk to Didier and I, to who I really want to thank for this lecture. So we'll be talking to you soon enough.